I think we live in a really, at a really crucial time uh, in the history of ideas. It's a time where, for the, really for the first time, we have um, what begins to be a global view of the universe that we live in. We have a cosmological model that tells us that the universe was much hotter and denser in the past. Um, the Big Bang framework of thinking about the history of the universe. Uh, we can cast our minds back to the, the, to the epoch uh, when the universe was completely dark. No starlight had yet been produced. And so there is a time when the stars light up. So just the fact that we can say these things and then not just stories, but they really are based on hard scientific evidence. I think that combination is really what excites me about being a cosmologist. As I said, we've reached a really an unprecedented level of understanding of our physical universe, but there are still some very troubling open questions, mysteries, enigmas that, that we just really do not have an answer to. For example, we know that the universe is accelerating its expansion. Um, this is sometimes it's called by the, by the name dark energy. There's some dark energy that appears to be uh, causing the universe to accelerate. And um, we really do not understand what this dark energy is. We can, we can put terms into the equations that model this very precisely, and it's not mathematically very complicated, but really any, everything we know about fundamental physics tells us that these terms should be much larger uh, generically. Or maybe you can arrange things in such a way that they're completely zero, but having this tiny little value that is very clearly distinct from zero that we observe in the universe, that's something uh, incredibly um, surprising. And so how do we go out and how do we learn about this? Um, and so upcoming surveys, uh, galaxy surveys, uh, actually map out this expansion history, how the universe accelerated in detail uh, over the last billion years or so. Um, and one of my research interests that, are, that, are that I'm developing now is to look in the areas of the universe that are uh, empty or almost empty because those are the places that are dominated by dark energy. And if we look at how these areas change over time, what their characteristics are, um, how they interact with the matter that's around them, uh, to try to really probe dark energy as a, as a uh, physical thing, see how it behaves when, uh, when it gets perturbed, what happens, how it pushes those regions apart. And then even the slightly less mysterious, but nevertheless still unsolved problem of, of dark matter. We do have some dark matter candidates. There are some ideas about what the dark matter could be from a fundamental physics point of view, extensions of the standard model of particle physics. But so far, um, we have not actually directly detected dark matter particles, nor have we actually produced them directly in, in uh, particle accelerators. Um, and so this remains a mystery, because wherever we look in the universe, we find that there are, appear to be clumps of matter that attract other visible matter around them. Just very recently, with the first release of the Planck results, it turns out that we see evidence for this dark matter even in the cosmic microwave background maps, these maps of microwaves coming from the sky. These microwaves traveled through the entire universe. And in Einstein's theory of relativity, uh, clumps of gravitating matter, like dark matter, deflect light um, that travels around, around them. And we see evidence for this deflection in these microwave maps from the cosmic microwave background. And so we have a, really a map of the integrated matter density of the entire universe all the way back to uh, when the afterglow of the Big Bang was, uh, was emitted. Um, so this is something really new that just, that just happened and, and based on this, new surveys are being planned. There are new observational campaigns, large observational campaigns. They're uh, usually very international in nature with lots of collaborators from, from different countries uh, to map out the density of galaxies in the entire universe and then to use very distant galaxies as sources and understand how their light gets deflected by the dark matter distribution uh, between us and them. 
And by doing that at different distances, you can actually build up a three-dimensional map of the dark matter, make dark matter visible through its gravitational effects, um, which is a really exciting pro prospect. So in 3D, now we've, we've done it with Planck in 2D, but this can do it in 3D. Um, and that will really give us a, a much better understanding of the properties of this still mysterious uh, component of the universe.